Welcome to Studio Cloud's video tutorial on invoice management. We're going to go ahead and walk through it uh, right here. We're on the invoice thing. As um, before we start, we just want to remind you that if you see anything in the video tutorial that is different than your program, go ahead and re uh, uh, refer to the written documentation. We keep that up to date where, um, when we have new products released, whereas the, the video tutorials do take a little bit more time to be released. Okay, in this window right here, we're looking at uh, different invoices, the invoice date, the client associated with the invoice, the total amount on the invoice, and the balance due. Uh, you can archive the invoice, which means that you're done with it completely and you don't want to uh, touch it anymore. You, you can add a payment directly from this window. You can create a project from, uh, or an order for, for this invoice. Um, please refer to the project management tutorial on that. You can email this invoice directly from here just by clicking that button. You can print it, you can edit it either by clicking that button or you can just double click it. And here we have an edited invoice right here. Um, let's actually go and start from the scratch using a brand new invoice. Uh, right down here is a new invoice window. And uh, over here on the right is where you have your product, service, and packages. By default, it's set to view all items, but you can sort it to view only specific items. You can also come in here and type in that in the names, and it'll show those. Or if you have a barcode scanner, you can just uh, click right there, and then you can start scanning barcodes, and it will start adding things automatically uh, to the uh, invoice. Uh, right here, we have different ca um, characteristics for the the product, service, and packages. The name. We have the price right there listed, the quantity. The quantity only applies if you're doing inventory management. Then over here, uh, it's blank if it's a package. If it says P, it's a product. If it says S, it's a service. You can come in here and change between your different product lists, and it does change the pricing as well. Uh, right like that. And then you can just leave it to view all if you so desire. Uh, to add something to the invoice, you can either double click or you can drag and drop. Either way works. Uh, you can right here let you attach a thumbnail to the uh, to this item. So if there's a, a photo attached to it, um, you can just click there and attach it, and that will be printed on the invoice. You can attach. A, you can also attach a file name. You can do notes if you want to. You, there, there's a description, which if you have a description for the product, it will automatically be added here, and then you can edit that. Uh, you can change tax. Uh, standard means that that item will be taxed. Tax exempt means it's uh, it will not be taxed. And zero tax is a tax associated with, uh, I believe, Canada. Um, uh, then we have uh, quantity, which if you just come in here, you can just change the quantity like that. Just type it in there. You can change the price here on the fly as well. What we have down here on the right side, the subtotal, so you can uh, see it right there. Line item discounts, we'll show you that in a second. Uh, we have a discount. This is a, called a global discount. You just come in here and you say, I want to give it a $2 discount. Or you say, I want to do a percentage of the subtotal, which is uh, 2%. Or um, percentage of subtotal and line item discount, so which means that you'll take the subtotal and you reduce it by the amount of discounts you give, then you'll apply the discount there. This is shipping and handling. Just enter the five dollars would be the example, and you'd uh, see right over here taxes. By default, you'd have a you'd have a default tax that you'd use. You could switch between your different tax pro profiles if you use them. Uh, that would be applicable uh, for in the U.S. if you have if you if you go across two different state lines, and you uh, have to have different taxes for those. Or if you have a out of, uh, out of state customer that doesn't pay tax or something like that. I mean, that's how you do that there, and this gives you a breakdown of all the tax-related stuff. Then you have your total due and the balance due. Right here, you select your client. You either double you double click on that, that to select them, and then you could attach them to an event, uh, which is useful uh, for financial tracking. So you can link uh, how much money you made for different calendar types or, or sub-calendar types. Um, and get different types of financials from it. So it is a useful thing to do. Let's go ahead and uh, remove that and show you the other options. Here you can type, you can uh, create a brand new client and it'll automatically insert it there. Another option is you can uh, edit the selected client. 
or if the client doesn't have have the right event associated with them, you can add that client to that event right from there. Right here we have the payments option. And uh, you have the client here. You can select which type of category. If it is credit card and you have Merchant Warehouse, you can process it. This button is disabled because this account does not have uh, a Merchant Warehouse account associated with it. This is for bookkeeping, and this is also for bookkeeping. Um, so if you're not using Studio Cloud's bookkeeping, you just skip, skip over those two options. Uh, the date of the payment and the amount that they're paying. You can type any notes you want, and you just uh, go ahead and save it there. Uh, here, uh, so you can print a receipt too, right there, by clicking that button. You can add new payment plans and add new payments too. Uh, we'll quickly walk through those. Uh, you put the name of the client, you type how they're going to pay, and uh, these two would also be for the bookkeeping section. If you have a Merchant Warehouse account, you can click this button and it will automatically charge their credit card if it's saved on file. Um, the outstanding balance right now is zero because we just added that payment. Otherwise, it would show uh, the one thousand eight hundred ninety-two and forty-four cents. Um, and then um, you would create the payment plan by coming here and generate payment plan, and it would uh, put all the payments down here. And when you click save, it would just add them here. Or you can do each one manually, so uh, you can do that. Uh, public notes are notes that are printed on the invoice. Private notes are notes that are internal and they're saved and you're only viewable here. They are not shown to the customer. Invoice date is the date of the invoice. Uh, by default, Studio Cloud will auto-generate the invoice number to be the next one in line when you click Save. You can override that. Um, this would also be useful if you decided that you wanted to start doing your invoices at a certain number. Do that once and then everyone after that point would be the next number higher. Uh, by default, the inventory is updated uh, when you add things to it and save it. You can add employees by just uh, clicking here. This is useful for uh, commissions and then you can print the invoice um, and or e the invoice is a PDF invoice and uh, you can also email that same PDF invoice and the invoice is customizable we'll go ahead and walk over and show you that in a little bit options here you do if you want to do line item discounts uh, you have to add in the columns and uh, just refer, refer to our different uh, our tutorials uh, that's by dollar value, that's by percentage, and um, you add it, type in the amount over there. Um, and then you could do different, these are to add or remove different items for the uh, invoice. Once you have a layout you like, you can just like save as default and it'll save that layout. So every time you create a new invoice or edit it, you'll have that layout. You can request e payment. What this will do is uh, generate an email that you can send to the customer where they can click on a link and pay their invoice. Um, with the paid for add-on cloud alerts you can have this automatically go out at certain time frames as well where they can pay online um, this does require a merchant warehouse account you can generate a contract or document for them to sign uh, you can uh, print a HTML version of, the, of this invoice although we don't recommend it uh, just because uh, the PDF one we can guarantee the the uh, look and feel whereas the HTML one we can't you can email the HTML one invoice to the client as well we also do not recommend doing that we recommend doing the PDF one so that you can guarantee the invoice you send is the same invoice that the customer uh, sees. You can record, re, uh, create orders from the invoice, refer to the project management tutorial on how to do that. And then you can also import items from ProSelect. Uh, this is the old style of doing things. We have a, a new uh, in a seamless integration with ProSelect, which uh, automatically sends it over the cloud. And so we recommend you view the tutorials on that one. Let's go ahead and uh, go to the uh, settings. So in this location right here, this would be uh, how you'd uh, set up your products. You just come in here, click New Product, and then you type in the name, description, price, and the cost. And then you can you can uh, there's a few different options to calculate prices based on cost and stuff like that. And you enable inventory tracking right here if you're going to do it. And then you could choose a different type of tax for that one. And then you could also generate a barcode as well here if you're using the barcode scanner. Um, or if you wanted to, you could just type in a barcode right there if you wanted to. And uh, you can select the product thumbnail. That is only used uh, in the uh, cloud proofing. It is not used in the uh, Dust2 cloud uh, management software. You can import these uh, using a CSV file, using a CSV file from uh, right there. And then you can duplicate if you have a lot of similar products. You can just click the duplicate button and it will add them there. 
uh, packages. Package A. Uh, you can type in a description. You can generate a barcode similar to the other the products. You can calculate a price, or you can just type in a price. Um, and you just drag it, drag and drop across what is in this uh, package. And then when you're done, you click save. And let's go ahead and uh, move to the price list. We have the, the examples here. So the way the price lists work is you just type in the name of the price list. Example price list. And then you come over here and you just select the different items that go in that price list. And then you come in here and uh, you would uh, type in the uh, whatever the dollar amount you want to be for this price list of that item. Um, then you remove it by clicking here if you don't want it there. The calendar type. Um, applies if you're using the cloud booking. This is how the uh, the prices are associated with an appointment. And then uh, you can generate a barcode PDF or just a normal PDF that doesn't have barcodes, or you can email the price list. All right there. Uh, you can manage your check cash credit card. If you have other options, you can add them here. Right here is the logo. Uh, by default. Um, well, uh, you would need to come in here and select a logo from the computer. Um, at that point, it uploads that logo so it is shared across all the computers. Um, however, uh, it is not loaded by default when you open up the program for the first time. So you do need to come in here and click the load logo from Studio Cloud after you've uploaded it once. The reason why uh, we do that is that um, sometimes uh, a company might have different logos or different brands, and so uh, different computers can be used to print off different brands. Um, examples of that would be if you have a photography business and you have a um, one side you have the portrait side of the photography business which has one uh, logo and then on the other side you have the wedding uh, side of the business which might have a different logo. Right here let's go ahead and go through the customized options. Here we have the uh, different uh, colors you can change. These are all to change the look and feel of the printed invoice. You can have a signature on there. In additional information, this is where, where you put your terms of agreement or anything else that you want to print it on every single invoice. Um, and this is this is all for uh, this is this this is not the items they've ordered. The items they ordered are right here, and these are this is what this is in the table. And you can go ahead and uh, change those there, and then re change the size as well. Uh, if you do this, all the items in the package will be printed on the invoice as well. If you have that unselected, they will not. And then uh, if you do, a, this is only for a payment receipt. So after they've done a payment, and if you want to print out a receipt, this is how you'd customize that payment receipt. Um, in here, you have the options of changing the currency symbol. This only changes it for the printed invoice. It doesn't change the currency symbol in the program. Um, and then some of these other things uh, are used um, throughout the program as well, um, such as the font size. You can change the font size of the program as well as the date format if you have a particular format. Um, whether it's uh, month, month, day, day, year, year, or however it is, you can change it there. Um, right here, by default, uh, the PDFs are views, viewed in Studio Cloud. If you have a, if you do not prefer that, you can change that to view it in a, a PDF reader outside of Studio Cloud. Wording. This is how you change the wording uh, in the program for the printed invoice. You can come in here and actually select uh, different wording if you so desire. Different. Uh, um, languages and you can type in the uh, like for example if you don't want the, the name file name to be shown on the printed invoice but you want to to have something like uh, uh, image number or something like that you can type it in right there and it'll, that will change the actual wording and you can do the same thing for the estimate here we have uh, right now uh, this, this is, these are the invoice and tax settings if you have this enabled it will automatically transfer a payment when it's entered into the invoice and when you click save it will automatically add a payment to your bookkeeping. Uh, this right here is your shipping and handling if you want it to be taxed. If you, and then there's the, if you want it to uh, have the tax status option so you can switch between it and the uh, invoice, you need to enable it there. This is the combo box that, uh, on each line item. And then there's piggyback taxes, uh, which is for, uh, I believe, Canada. And then this is the default uh, tax profile where you'd enter in there. Uh, and this would be by default applied to every single invoice. Um, you could show your tax ID on the, on the invoice. You type it right here. Uh, some locations do require that. Moving on to the tax profiles. 
So what you do for tax profile is, is enter an example. Well, you'd enter the name of it. Maybe it's a out-of-state customer. And then you enter the name and the value like that. And then you just uh, so then hit tax. You just save it. And then uh, when you edit the invoice, you can uh, go ahead and select that that example tax. Well, that the tax profile you created. And that's a, a quick overview on inventory in Studio Cloud. If you have any other questions, refer to the written documentation.